This morning, school officials down in Brown County are investigating a racist posting that was printed in a high school yearbook. So, Lauren, in that 2020 yearbook, an African-American student was listed as, quote, black guy instead of using his name. In a letter obtained by WRTV, parents and students were notified of the error. The letter says an investigation is now underway to find out exactly what happened. It goes on to say that the error in the 2020 yearbook is a clear violation of our non-discrimination policy. The yearbook's school's yearbook is typically put together by the yearbook class and is overseen and edited by teachers. Last night, the district superintendent released this video of apology. I've already heard from a couple of uh, class of 2020 uh, graduates who are just sickened by this and couldn't agree more. Want the community to understand this evening that this is fundamentally a situation that we are taking as the only priority for our time right now. What we are deeply committed to is advancing equity and inclusion in our school system. The Broward County School Superintendent also said that the district is working with their vendor and the student's family to come up with a solution, including looking into potentially reprinting the yearbook and having students return their 2020 yearbooks. Lauren? Raviel, it's 5.05 .05 and long lines to vote are reality across the state and in Marion County. Some voters are tapping their toes while they wait to early vote. And WRTV's own Kelsey Anderson is joining us this morning with how some local artists are using this to their advantage. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So I don't know about you, but I am not musically talented whatsoever. So you will not be seeing me here outside of the CCB. But for some artists who haven't been able to perform since the pandemic started, they are helping voters get through this line and hopefully tapping their toes. So 85 Indianapolis based performers are hosting 100 free live shows to an audience of early voters. Thanks to the pandemic, the show in Luger Plaza is the first paying gig many of the singers, musicians and bands have had in months. Goldie Ingram tells us the places she normally performs are closed. This is all I do for a living, so it's barely making ends meet. Everybody knows musicians are starving musicians. This opportunity, it doesn't matter what it pays. It's just the fact that we're able to get out and do something, especially when the community is it, they're out here and they can tell that the, we can tell that the music is soothing them. Now the concerts are hosted at Luger Plaza and the executive director of the plaza tells us they came up with the idea once they saw just how long the lines were to vote early. Now several voters tell us voters tell us that they stood in line for over 90 minutes and that music really helped just soothe the anxiety of waiting in line and just kind of the frustrations of having to wait for so long and Ingram tells us that being able to play live music for a pretty large crowd was really good for her soul. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. Uh, Kelsey, thank you. Tonight, the first debate between the three men running for Indiana governor will be held virtually. Republican incumbent Eric Holcomb, Democratic Dr. Woody Myers, his challenger, as well as Libertarian challenger Donald Rainwater will each be in separate spaces as a COVID-19 precaution during that debate. You can watch the debate at 7 tonight at WRTV.com as well as the WRTV Facebook page. You could also watch on the WRTV app on your streaming device such as Ro Roku, Roku, Fire Stick, and Apple TV. And we have everything that you need to know about the election up on our website right now at WRTV.com. We go one-on-one -on -one with the candidates who will appear on your ballot. Plus, we have the dates and the deadlines that you need to know about to make sure that your vote counts this year. That's all at WRTV.com slash election 2020. The time right now is 5.07. Let's turn now to the growing impact of the coronavirus on Hoosier lives. State health officials report nearly 1,600 new cases of the virus. That's the lowest number of new cases since last Thursday. So far, more than 149,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for COVID-19. Health officials also say 23 more Hoosiers have died with the virus. Although the Department of Health officials say 11 of those deaths happened between September 17th and October 3rd. They were recently verified through medical review.
And the school COVID dashboard has also been updated. It shows 476 more students have tested positive for COVID-19. 92 teachers and 119 staff members have also tested positive for the coronavirus. The state health officials say they have not been able to update the number of hospital admissions since Thursday, and they blame data issues for that problem. Still, we know that as our cases continue to rise in our state, that could lead to an increase in hospitalizations. And right now, hospitals are preparing for a possible influx of patients. WRTV reached out to IU Health and Franciscan Health. Hospital leaders explained some of the specific ways they're making sure that they'll be able to handle a spike in COVID cases. Whether we need to uh, cohort patients, dedicate specific units for the exclusive use of uh, COVID. Um, we've created a lot of extra rooms that have uh, negative airflow capabilities. Uh, so I think we are, we have, we've certainly stockpiled more PPE uh, to prepare for uh, a surge. What we're doing downtown um, on the Methodist Hospital and University Hospital campuses is looking at the spaces we have available and making sure we can convert them at any time to be whatever level of care or whatever type of space we need. Representatives from both hospital systems say they've learned lessons from the outbreak in the spring, including the best way to treat their patients. This morning, Indianapolis residents who want to be green now have a new recycling option. The Department of Public Works is putting a new recycling box at the Pike Township Trustee's Office on the northwest side. The site has eight and a half miles from Broad Ripple Park, which was previously the closest recycling location for northwest side residents. The new box is located at 5665 Lafayette Road. Let's get a look at our forecast right now with Todd Clausen and check the radar. Todd, what can folks expect as they're waking up this morning? You know, as you walk out the door, you're going to be walking out to some patchy drizzle. I do think you're going to have to throw your windshield wipers on, on at times here throughout the course of the morning drive, but we're not going to be dealing with any heavy rainfall. That is the good news that has at least made its way out of the area as of right now. So as the kids head off to the bus stop, uh, obviously it's still going to be dark out in many locations. You have that little bit of a shine from the wet roads, the wet leaves out there. So just slow down, give yourself uh, some extra time 46 degrees as the kids head off to school and then as they come home still mostly cloudy skies and a temperature right around 55 degrees what's going to happen though as we get later in the day today is another round a more significant rain is going to move in after sunset part of a warm front that's going to bring the temperatures up close to 70 degrees tomorrow Thursday, we shoot to near 80 degrees. We stay warm on Friday, and then you see the cold front come through. The big drop-off as we head into the weekend. More on your extended forecast here coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, Todd, thank you so much for that. Two inmates die at the hands of other inmates inside the Marion County Jail. Straight ahead, we're taking a closer look at the problem and getting reaction from jail leaders. And several companies are looking to hire Hoosiers. We're breaking down the very latest opportunities here. Coming up next, stick around. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. This morning, two recent deaths at the Marion County Jail are raising concerns. This after two inmates were killed just a week apart at the hands of other inmates. We spoke to a woman who asked not to be identified. She says her son is currently incarcerated at the Marion County Jail, and she's worried that more deadly attacks will happen if the jail does not make safety improvements. Anyone that has a loved one in there has to be feeling the same way. You just don't know what to do. You don't know how to help them or how to get this fixed. It's not our place to judge them. You know, that's why they're in there to go to court. The jail needs to get this fixed. They need to get it fixed now before someone else gets killed. We reached out to the Marion County Sheriff's Office and they declined an interview request saying both deaths are still under investigation. But the office did release a statement to WRTV and it, it reads in part as follows. Though it is a fact that sheriff's deputies and detention deputies are underpaid, overworked, and the Marion County Sheriff's Office is understaffed, we have not concluded that this is the cause for either of the deaths at this time. It is 5.15. The stepmother of a Grant County girl who was found murdered is going to trial this week. 34-year-old Amanda Carmack is charged with neglect of a dependent resulting in death, domestic battery, and strangulation. It was September of last year when 10-year-old Skylie Carmack's body was found in a shed behind her home in Gas City. 
The Grant County coroner said that Skylie died of strangulation and had been dead for four days before her body was found. Carmack initially tried to claim mental disease as her defense, but the mental evaluation found her to be competent to stand trial. If convicted, Carmack could face life in prison. Lord, now to Louisville, where, the, where Kentucky's attorney general is pushing to keep grand jury evidence in the Breonna Taylor case sealed. Daniel Cameron filed a motion just last week asking a judge to keep the material all under wraps. He wants to wait until a jury is seated in the trial of the only police officer charged in the case, Brent Hankinson. Hankinson is charged with three counts of wanton endangerment for firing shots into the apartment next to Taylor's. This morning, Colorado firefighters are scrambling to gain ground against two blazes, including that state's largest in their state's history. The Cameron Peak Fire has torched more than 204,000 acres through two national forests. Gusty winds and dry conditions have fueled the growth of the fire, which ignited back in August. At this hour, that fire is 51% contained. And Todd, they could use some rain in Colorado, uh, obviously, we've seen a lot of rain in our area, and our windshields will get the workout, another workout today. Yeah, you know, we needed the rainfall as well here, Raphael, and we've got several inches of rain in some spots, and some of you over the next 24 hours are going to pick up another half an inch to maybe inch and a half, and I'll show you that rainfall uh, projection in just a second, but outside right now, not a whole lot going on. We had some good rain late last night and then into the overnight hours. Pretty quiet right now with just cloudy skies, and there's some drizzle out there, I definitely think your windshield wipers will be going as you make your way uh, into work here. If you have to do so this morning, or maybe you're just running the kids to school or out running some errands. Here is the heavier shower activity that's now pushing off in uh, to Ohio. Uh, part of a front that has pushed to our south, but this front is going to come back to the north, and that's what's going to bring more significant rain back into the forecast later on uh, this evening. Let me walk you through the day on Truecast, and you can see just lots of clouds around throughout much of the middle half of the day. There'll be some drizzle off and on throughout the day today as well, but nothing significant until later on uh, this evening. And that's when you look to the west here and you can see some pockets of heavier rainfall, a more widespread uh, rain heading in our direction. And this is at six o'clock this evening. I'll advance it for you. And you notice as we work our way into the hours after sunset, some pretty good rainfall here in northern locations. And then here in the metro area over towards Richmond during the overnight hours, oh, we get into some decent rain once again and that's going to be the final hurrah or the final push a significant rainfall for us in this very wet stretch that started late in the day on Sunday. I stopped the rainfall potential here at 5 p.m. and you see that drizzle is really not going to amount to anything in uh, the rain gauge. Fast forward when that next wave of rain comes in this evening and then throughout the overnight hours and look at this by tomorrow morning we're looking at over an inch of rain potentially in some areas once again so it's going to go turn into another wet period but the timing again of the more significant rain Rainfall is going to be while most of you are home from work this evening inside and then into the overnight hour. So it times out fairly well. Uh, great sleeping weather. 40s and 50s here this morning. Temperatures today will be topping off right around 60 degrees with cloudy skies and that patchy drizzle. And then for the day tomorrow, we do start to warm it up. It's another cloudy day for us for the most part, but we get up to right around 70 degrees. And then going forward in this forecast, Thursday by far the best of the week, 80 degrees, lots of sunshine. Friday still warm at 76, but storms arrive late. And then as we work our way into Saturday, much colder air starts to work its way into uh, uh, the area, uh, but it's going to be a dry weekend. That's the good news if you have weekend plans. And then as we head into Monday, more showers are going to be possible. But roadways, even though there's not a lot of rainfall out there, Lauren, still wet all across the area. All right, Todd, and let's take a look at traffic as you are heading out there on those wet roads this morning. This is on the northwest side at I-65 and I-465. So what you're looking at here is a crash we are monitoring. This is in the northbound lane of I-465 as you approach I-65. The left lane is closed for this crash and we'll continue to monitor this, but you'll need to slide over to the right and take it a little bit slower as you head through that area. At 520 this morning, we're learning more about new job openings all around central Indiana. We know several companies are looking to hire Hoosiers. And Lauren, the Amazon, uh, the Amazon Greenfield Fulfillment Center is now open and they're looking to hire people. They're looking to hire 
Hoosiers. Employees at the building re receive inventory, they pick and ship cus customer orders, and they support network logistics. If you're interested in a job at Amazon in Greenfield, go to AmazonDelivers.jobs. Positions are also available in Whitestown, Plainfield, Greenwood, and Indianapolis. CVS is also hiring. They're looking to fill 15,000 positions nationwide, and about 150 of those will be here in the Indianapolis area. 10,000 of the new jobs nationwide will be full and part-time licensed pharmacy techs. Additional jobs the company is hiring for include pharmacists, nurse practitioners, and distribution center employees. To fill these positions, the company will hold two virtual hiring events. The first one is this Thursday. You can learn more about these job opportunities and dozens of other open positions by going to Hiring Who's Hoosiers.com and looking at the job board. You can also check out Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page. Both of those resources also help you with the application process. The time right now is 521 here on Good Morning Indiana. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So Operation Warp Speed aims to come up with a coronavirus vaccine as quickly as possible. And a Texas teen, Raphael, is giving all the scientists in that initiative run for their money. So I want you to meet 13-year-old, 14-year-old uh, Annika Shabrulo. She recently won the 3M Young Scientist Challenge as well as $25 thousand dollars. She was only in middle school at the time when she entered the contest just months ago and originally planned her project to involve the seasonal flu. But later she changed all of that to focus on COVID-19, being driven by the scope of the pandemic and the people who are suffering. We just always have this constant fear, like who's going to get infected by the coronavirus? And I developed this uh, molecule which can bind to a certain protein on the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And this protein, by binding to it, it'll stop the function of the protein. So I started with over a database of over 698 million compounds. Did I say she was 14 years old? Because I didn't understand where she said, but I'm glad that she's working on this. On top of, besides being a budding medical researcher, she's a gifted artist and dancer. We are so thankful for the youth of America, because Todd Clausen, I need a translator. What did she just say? <laughs> I, I'm with you, Raphael. I have uh, no, no idea, but uh, she's, she's a lot smarter than the two of us. So, Amazing. All right, outside right now, we are dealing with some patchy drizzle across uh, the area. The significant or more widespread or heavier rainfall has now made its way out of the area. And most of today, we're dealing with cloudy skies and that patchy drizzle, especially at least throughout the morning hours. Temperatures slowly climb. It's about 51 one degrees by the noon hour. Once we transition here into the afternoon hours, still cloudy, but once we get to five o'clock onward, there's a little better chance of heavier rain moving back into the area. We will talk about that and look ahead to the rest of your week, which features a big time warm up. all coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV. Well, the rain is moving out for now. Now here at 530, meteorologist Todd Clausen breaking down if any we can see any more needed showers for our Tuesday. And a frightening situation for a driver on the interstate in the middle of the night. The investigation now underway after a pumpkin crashed through his windshield. Plus, early voting lines are long here in Marion County. We'll show you how local musicians are stepping up to make standing in line a little bit easier. Good Morning Indiana continues right now at 530. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. It is Tuesday, October the 20th, and welcome to Good Morning Indiana. So, Lauren and Todd, I opened the front door, I stepped outside, and I thought... Huh. Okay. It could be worse. It oh, could yeah. be worse. So let's so let's just enjoy the day for what it is. Yeah, Raphael, <laughs> it was just a little bit of a misty drizzle when I was driving into work yeah. this morning and Todd is telling looking at radar right now and it looks like a lot of that's moved out, Todd. Yeah, you know, the significant rainfall has moved out and the drizzle is out there. And so I do think you'll have to throw your windshield wipers on occasionally for that drizzle and the damp conditions that we have out there. Uh, but radar has a very hard time picking up the drizzle simply because it's so light. That's why you don't see a ton of green on the map here across central Indiana. We had a few heavier showers 
here to the east. You see they have now moved off to Ohio. And uh, as far as any significant rainfall, at least this morning, that has come to an end. And it's really not until later on this evening that we get back into another round of heavier rain. Uh, until then, it's just lots of clouds and periodic drizzle from time to time. 43 in Peru right now, 44 uh, in Indy, and it's 50 in Bloomington. Temperatures will be a little bit warmer today than they were yesterday. So that's the good news with those clouds around throughout the morning hours. And then eventually we get into the 50s by 1 p.m. And highs eventually this evening should get to close to 60 degrees, although our high temperature today officially probably doesn't happen until close to midnight as that warmer air starts to work its way back in. And it's with that warmer air comes the heavier rain. We'll time that out for you once again coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's get a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads this morning. We can tell you that craft we were monitoring earlier on the northwest side has now cleared, so that is good news. And this is a look at I-465 and I-74 here near Crawfordsville Road on the west side where traffic is traveling up to speed. No delays. Let's take it down to the Plainfield area. This is I-70 near State Road 2. 67. Traffic here is moving along up to speed. We do have construction ongoing in this spot, so just keep that in mind for your morning commute. But other than that, no major issues to slow you down. So new from overnight, fire burning through the roof of a TGI Friday's restaurant. This is on Indy's west side. Multiple fire crews were called out to this location on West 38th Street around 2 o'clock this morning. Flames were seen coming from the building when the firefighters arrived. Officials say the fire happened where a new roof was built over an old one. And the building is likely a total loss. No injuries have been reported. And Lauren also knew overnight a death investigation is now underway on the north side of Indianapolis. Here are the details. Officers located a victim east on East 37th Street and Baltimore Avenue around 10 last night. Not much information has been released at this time, but we are told that the homicide detectives also responded to the scene. A scary situation now after a pumpkin smashed through a man's windshield when he was driving on the highway. The pumpkin dropped from the overpass above. 20-year-old Caleb Needham said that he was driving on I-70 to his home in Hendricks County when this happened on early Saturday morning. He said he made it to the other side of the overpass and that's when the pumpkin crashed into his windshield, landing in his passenger seat. He called police who said he was lucky the situation was not any worse. They said if it would have came through like the driver's side where I was sitting that I probably would have died. I'm just so thankful like that it happened like the way it did and like I didn't have anyone in the passenger seat. One of the things that strikes me the most is the carelessness of some people's actions. You know, whether it was a teenager or whoever, and maybe it wasn't even a teenager, you know, just the carelessness of someone's actions. Think, you know, trying to have what they think is fun, but could have caused serious consequences more so than just smashing a window. Well, the Hendricks County deputies that responded told Needham that they've received some calls of similar incidents happening lately. And so WRTV has reached out to the sheriff's office for more information on this investigation. Of course, we'll let you know if there are any updates in that case. Now to the latest on COVID-19's impact on our state. The Indiana State Department of Health reports 1,589 new cases of the virus. That brings the total number to more than 149,000 since the pandemic began. 23 new deaths were also reported. Some of those were confirmed after further review and date back to as early as September the 17th. 3,727 total Hoosiers have died with COVID-19. Well, the pandemic may be to blame for putting lives at risk in ways that are not directly related to COVID-19. According to the Indiana Coalition Against Domestic Violence, deaths connected to violence have increased by 86% across the Hoosier state compared to this same time last year. Sadly, many domestic violence advocates predicted this trend. Kind of all the factors that, that worsen domestic violence or intimate partner violence, just exacerbated by this pandemic, those same kind of things, financial insecurity, losing jobs, and we knew this is going to be potentially bad with people being stuck at home together. Julie Morrison is a forensic nurse at IU Health Methodist Hospital. While emergency shelters are working overtime to find safe housing for people in need, capacity and resources are limited. However, Morrison says anyone who needs help should not hesitate to reach out. Come to the hospital. You can even call the hospital. We get, I get calls just from the operator. A stranger saying, what do I do? They, they don't know that there's somewhere they can go, go for help. The National Domestic Violence Hotline is staffed 24 hours a day. That number is 800-799-7233. 
You can also visit the website at thehotline.org. Lord, now to our Democracy 2020 coverage. A new change being added to the pending presidential debate after the first one, as you may recall, was considered chaotic. A presidential President Trump and Joe Biden will now be muted while the other delivers his two-minute remarks during the Thursday event. The move is meant to prevent all the interruptions in that first debate, as you may recall. The commission says the remainder of the 15-minute block will be open to discussion with no muting. Now, the Trump campaign has said it's opposed to that rule change. The Biden campaign has yet not commented on this change. Vice President and former Indiana Governor Mike Pence will be in Indianapolis to vote early on Friday. The vice president and second lady had to reschedule after they canceled their original trip at the beginning of the month. Details on their visit this week have not been released, but the White House did say they will hold an event up in Fort Wayne in Allen County on Thursday. Well, we are two weeks away from Election Day and Hoosiers across the state are waiting in line to cast their ballots early. Our own Kelsey Anderson is joining us live with what the wait lines look like here in Marion County and why some voters may be tapping their toes. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, good morning. So Luger Plaza outside of the city county building here downtown Indianapolis. It has become the stage for dozens of performers who haven't been able to play their play live since the beginning of the pandemic. So 85 Indianapolis based performers are hosting 100 free live shows to an audience of early voters over the next two weeks. Thanks to the pandemic, the show in Luger Plaza is the first paying gig many of the singers, musicians and bands have had in months. Goldie Ingram tells us the places she normally performs are closed. The venues that we normally sing at, like the Jazz Kitchen and the Chatterbox, we don't know when they're going to open. We, we don't know when we're going to have the opportunity to do that. So the fact that there are other ways for us to be able to do it is going to be fantastic. Now, Ingram tells us being able to perform live has been good for her soul, and voters tell us it makes the long lines not so bad. Now, this is going to be artists of all genres. Are, they're going to be performing every day of early voting. The Cultural Trail has a list of those performances over on their website. And in the first 14 days, more than 21,000 Hoosiers have voted early here in Marion County. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. All right, you saw Kelsey there outside. She did not have uh, the umbrella, and that's because most of the significant rain has moved out of uh, the area. There's still a little bit of patchy drizzle that is out there across parts of central Indiana. That radar is just not picking up. So as you do take to the roadways here this morning, I still think you're going to need to have to use the wipers at times here throughout the course of uh, the day. Just kind of throw them on and get rid of that patchy drizzle. Then we get a little bit of a break in the afternoon where it should just be mainly dry. And then once we get to the evening hours, you notice late here I have the red back in which is likely that's because more significant rain is going to move back into the forecast as we get into the evening hour so it's just some patchy drizzle here throughout the morning once we get to six o'clock onward another push of which could actually be some very heavy rainfall in spots moves into central Indiana once again more on that coming up in main weather here in just a couple minutes uh, Todd, thank you so much. A pre-flight COVID-19 test could save you from quarantining during your vacation. Coming up, the new system being offered at, for some tropical destinations. And more changes for the upcoming Big Ten college football season. We'll explain the new rules being put in place for IU and Purdue games. And by 40, we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back. It is 543. The coronavirus cases remain high here in Indiana and dozens of other states as well. This morning, ABC's Faith Abube reports on the growing fear of a second wave of cases. This morning, a new recommendation from the CDC saying anyone traveling on public transportation should wear a mask, a practice already required in several states. It all comes as dangerous signs emerge. Nearly 400,000 new virus cases nationwide in the past week. Hospitalizations up in 41 states and 21% of hospitals across the country running low on ICU beds. This is by far the, the highest number of patients that we've had since the pandemic began. In El Paso, Texas, a 500% increase in cases this month. The virus taking the life of El Paso Bishop Harrison Johnson who gained worldwide attention last year, presiding over the funeral for a mass shooting victim. Something like 
the August 3rd shooting would never be here in El Paso, right. but it was. So, you know, we can never say it can't happen here or it can not happen to us. On the front lines in Salt Lake City, healthcare workers say resources are stretched thin. They cannot continue to do this at this pace for as long as we are looking um, at the trajectory of COVID-19 for our country. Other trends that experts call worrying. Massachusetts just reported its highest number of cases in one day since May. Florida is seeing infection rates rise for the first time since July. Arkansas has reported its largest daily increase in hospitalizations. And as cases rise across Illinois, some areas could face new restrictions. Chicago's mayor with this warning. Make no mistake, we are in the second surge. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Hoosiers now in limbo waiting for financial help from Congress may have to wait to see if lawmakers take any action today. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has set a deadline for Republicans and Democrats to come together by today to strike a deal on a stimulus plan. Both sides have been struggling to agree on a price tag for the benefits Americans would see out of that legislation. Ms. Pelosi says without at least a verbal agreement among lawmakers today, it will be unlikely a deal will go through before the election. Pre-flight COVID testing is starting to become an option to avoid a 14-day quarantine when you get your final, get to your final destination, that is. Starting November 1st, you'll be allowed to travel to Costa Rica from the U.S. If you get a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours of leaving the U.S. For the Bahamas, you need a negative PCR test seven days before your trip. Then you'll have to get a rapid antigen test when you get there and then again four days later. Experts say because of the incubation period for COVID, you can have it any time between two and 14 days after you've been exposed. A negative result only applies at the time you took the test. Having these alternatives to quarantine related to travel creates some confusion about what a test really means in the context of quarantine. So uh, I worry a little bit that, that we're losing the message, that we're losing that message that a test is only just a moment in time. Dr. Doran there says that places that require multiple tests are more effective, but it could be a challenge to get a test before you leave. Many hospitals have stopped doing the pre and post travel tests because of a lack of supplies. So Lauren, I wanna take you out west right now, but let me just be honest, out of protest, the producer is making me read the script and you'll see why, because some states already, you gotta be kidding me, seeing snow, several inches of snow in Iowa, they're expecting to get up to nine inches. I read this in protest. According to the National Weather Service, yesterday's storm set a new record for the state's earliest significant snowfall. That previous record was back in November of 1968. The snow made some roads slick for drivers, causing multiple crashes and a pileup. Iowa expected to also get more snow later this week. And Todd, like in Vegas, what happens in Iowa should stay <laughs> in Iowa. Uh, Raphael, back in 1989, I don't know, you go back in the history books, 1989, yesterday, October the 19th, the earliest snow ever in Indianapolis. So it can happen, it can happen here as well, but we're warmer this uh, year and we're dealing with just rain across the area. That is the good news as we break down your weather headlines uh, by day parts this morning. We're dealing with some patchy drizzle uh, during the morning hours. I think most of the afternoon hours is just kind of cloudy across most of central Indiana. And then once we get into the evening hours, more rain arrives and it's this evening. Some of that rainfall actually could be heavy once again. And I'll show you on Truecast coming up in uh, just a few minutes. Minutes, but many of you may have woken up at some point throughout the overnight hours and heard the rain on your roof or on your windows. And there was some pretty good rain that went uh, through the area, uh, but it's now moved off into Ohio. We still have the clouds around. And as I mentioned, the drizzle, which you'll have to throw your windshield wipers on maybe occasionally as you get on the roadways here this morning, if you have to do so. But the next wave of precipitation that's going to head our way uh, later on tonight, but our temperatures will actually be warming up. And so we're just talking about rain across the area. There's no threat of any wintry weather weather in our forecast. So let's talk about the rain showers today. You notice throughout the day today, just mostly cloudy skies that drizzle off and on at times in spots. But once we get to the evening hours, here we are at 830. So this is after sunset. So you can kind of use sunset as your time reference for uh, the rain uh, to move back in. And you notice there'll be pockets of some pretty heavier rain that'll be moving in. It'll continue through the overnight hours.
hours and into the early portion of your Wednesday morning commute. So when Good Morning Indiana starts tomorrow at 4.30, it's probably still going to be raining uh, pretty significantly in spots. And then uh, that wave of rain will move off towards the east. And then most of the day tomorrow will be dry, at least during the daytime hours. But again, it's going to be uh, fairly significant. You see over an inch of rain additional uh, in many spots on top of what we saw uh, the past uh, two days. As far as today, cloudy skies, patchy drizzle. Your high temperature gets up to right around uh, 60 degrees. As we work our way into the day tomorrow, Again, most of that rain comes to an end before 8 a.m. And then throughout the day tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be warming up in uh, to uh, the 60s and 70s across the area. And then look at Thursday. Thursday is by far the best day of the week with a high temperature that gets up to 80 degrees and with sunshine. It's not going to be too bad on Friday either before the cold front arrives. We're into the mid 70s. But Friday, as that front slides through, there could be a round of showers, even a few thunderstorms. And then behind that front, significantly cooler weather for the weekend Saturday and Sunday mid 50s to right around 60 degrees but the good news is if you do have weekend plans Lauren they look while they will be cool it looks to be dry all across the area all right Todd thanks let's get a look at traffic right now things are pretty quiet at I-70 and Emerson Avenue traffic is moving along up to speed both eastbound and westbound no crashes out there to slow you down well it is 550 and there will not be any tailgating at IU or Purdue football games this season Indiana University says it will not allow tailgating at any of its surface or grass parking lots around Memorial Stadium. Purdue and all 14 Big Ten Conference schools also issued similar bans in an effort to protect athletes and the community from the spread of COVID-19. The Big Ten previously announced no tickets would be sold to the general public for football games this year. And you'll notice something a little different on IU's uniforms this season. Head football coach Tom Allen announcing this no, new social justice patch will be worn during the season on players' jerseys and helmets. It's an effort to show unity and highlight concerns over racial injustice. Indiana University's other athletic teams are also incorporating this logo into their uniforms. IU plays their first football game of the season this Saturday at home against Penn State. So Lauren, Netflix has released a trailer for Chadwick Boseman's final film. The Black Panther star plays Prohibition-era blues artist Ma Rainey's love interest in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. It takes place in 1927 Chicago, and Rainey is portrayed by Viola Davis. Bozeman died from colon cancer in August. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is slated to hit Netflix on December the 18th. An elderly couple pulled from a canal coming up. The people credited for saving their lives. We'll be right back. It is 555. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. Here's a live look in the downtown area. I-65 and I-70 at the South Split where traffic is moving along up to speed. All lanes are open and that is good news. We'll continue to keep a close eye on your morning commute throughout your Tuesday and keep you updated on any delays. Raphael. Uh, Lauren, three police officers and five Good Samaritans save a couple from their car after it became submerged in a canal. This happened in Suffolk County, New York, in on Long Island. Police say the couple's car hit another vehicle involved in a crash, went through a fence, and landed in the water. The rescuers were able to pull 78-year-old Joseph Abatable out of the vehicle. They had to break a window to get his wife, 76-year-old Dolores Free, who was unconscious. An off-duty officer was able to revive the woman who was then taken to the hospital. As I say, there's always good people, Todd Clausen, doing good things every day, not only uh, in New York, but around the country and around the world. Good stuff there. Absolutely. It's nice to see people uh, jump in. You know that water uh, could not have been warm this time of year, so thankfully they're safe. All right, temperatures, as you can see on both sides of me, are in uh, the 40s. 43 in Logansport, 49 in Bloomington. And the significance of this is we're above freezing, so you don't have to worry about any wintry precipitation because there is still some moisture out there. The roadways are still wet, even though the more significant or steady rain has come to an end across the area for now. So as we go throughout the day today, overall cloudy skies and patchy drizzle will be a possibility. Your high temperature gets up to 60 degrees, but heavier rain moves back in tonight after sunset. So anything before sunset is just going to be a little bit of patchy drizzle here and there across uh, the area. Once we get past a sunset, that's when we're going to start to see some heavier showers move in. Tomorrow, 71. The warmer air works back in. Thursday still by far the best day of the week before cooler temperatures return for the weekend. The time now is 5.57. This is Good Morning Indiana. You're watching right here on WRTV. Stay with us. We're back at the top of the hour. <laughs> 